am very happy to be here. I think this is a great chamber of commerce. There's a lot of energy and positive things going on. So one of the things that I like to do to get us started is to get everybody to stand up and do a little brain connecting. <clears throat> and you can look at this if you'd like. So I am sure our educators know all about kinesiology. So this is to connect both hemispheres of our brain, which when we're listening and learning and doing things, really is a better way than just having one part of our brain working. So here's what we do. <coughs> First thing is crisscross. Now if you can do this, fine, otherwise just use your hand. So it's elbow to knee. Ugh, can you feel your brain connecting? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> And if you can't get your knee up, just put your hand down. Okay. <laughs> now, I didn't, I didn't tell her to video this. Okay, the next thing is called a figure eight. So you put your hands together like this and you make a figure eight. All right. And then the last one that is a bit of a contortion you put the backs of your hands together, link your fingers, and now you're going to twist and come through. Yeah, that, that'll really make your brain work. <laughs> okay, put your backs of your hands together. We'll do two more. There you go, bring it through. <laughs> come on, come on. One more. Backs of your hands together, link your fingers, and come through. Now, you can work on that all week long and see if you can get it. There you go. <laughs> so our agenda for today, I've got a couple things on the table for you. And I do have an assignment for you. Aren't you glad? <laughs> We've got students here. You're used to this. All right. The postcard that I ordered for you got delayed because of the weather. I think we can all understand, but I thought the post office delivered every day, come rain or shine, or snow, sleet, whatever. So instead of that, I have my backup plan, an index card here. And what I want you to be thinking about is one idea that you can use that I'm going to share with you, and there might be some group dialogue as well. So look at this and say, what one thing can I use tomorrow back at the office? And then what the original plan was, on the bottom, you want to say when you're going to do that one thing. So it's my one thing and when. And then I invite you to send that to me. My email, this will show up a couple times, but if you want to use the QR code, that'll take you right to my email at Platinum. So you can do that. That's what the index cards are for. And then if any of you like to take notes, because I know some of you like to take notes and some of you like to sit and listen and some of you like to check your email and whatever. So this will be on the table. Um, my count, I made 40 of these, but I'm not sure if that's quite how many people are here. So if you have extras at your table, please pass them on. So that's our little bit of the mechanics. And this is what I would like to go over with you today. So we already did number one, our brain connecting. Next I'm going to tell you a little about who I am. We're going to talk about the profit model, the revenue model, the strategies, wrap it up, and then come back to one thing that you are going to do. The other thing just to keep in mind is if you like what I'm sharing today and want to say something positive, I'm looking for three testimonials after we're all done. So if you say, hey, I got one good thing, come up and see us afterwards. Now, I've been around doing what I do for a long time, 30 plus years. And the first time that I was asked to do a marketing plan, and that's really where a lot of this stuff ends up, um, I was at Medtronic. And I had recently finished my graduate degree, and I thought, all right. I have a master's degree in marketing, and I'm asked to do a marketing plan. I don't even know what that is. So unfortunately, some of us go to school and are in programs that don't give us some of that real hands-on stuff. So I did um, a case study. Anybody here been to MBA school? OK, well, if you haven't, you get to do lots of case studies. And my format was 14 pages long, and I had about 10 of those to do my last semester in school. So I thought, 
got that nailed. Well, I take it into my boss, worked on it all weekend because I was a little bit hyper and worried because I didn't know what I was doing. And so I take it to my boss and he goes, oh, well, you know, that shows your thought process, but that's not a marketing plan. So luckily then he said, you know, here's one from one of the other product managers. So that was not a fun situation. And probably there are some of you here that have said, I need to do things to grow my business. I need to put a plan together. Some of you hate planning. I love planning because that's kind of how my brain defaults. So that's what I do, and I have learned over the years, learned when I was in corporate America, and then I taught in two different schools, Century, that you all know of, and also the University of St. Thomas, and taught how to do marketing. In fact, I did seminars off and on for 10 years on how to do marketing if you weren't a marketing person, which is almost an impossible seminar to do, so I, I finally quit. <laughs> Anyway, I just want to share that with you because it took me a while to figure out what to do. And I love models and I love making things simple. So I hope to make it a little bit simpler today, although when I get rolling on details, it can get confusing. <laughs> so we're going to move now into, oh, I'll just tell you what this is about. So. My business is future focused that I've had since 1988 and that's where I work with smaller companies and that's primarily now my Facebook group where I have a group of B2B companies that are under 5 million that want to grow their business so we work together strictly in the Facebook group with my company Future Focus. The larger clients that I work with also B2B 25 to 100 million that's where I work with my colleagues at the Platinum group. So that's just differentiated by size. And as we talk about some of the things today, you might go, oh, she's doing that thing. So when we get down to it, did I skip? OK. Some of these got into a slightly different order because I had two presentations ready for you today. But we're going to talk about these four strategies. So here's one way to look at them. The titles of them don't matter as much as really understanding what they are. But it's market penetration, product development, market development, and diversification. First thing I would guess most of us, if you're in a profit business, if you're in a nonprofit, then you talk about things a little differently, but you still got to get, get some money. So I think we would all agree that there's two ways to grow profits in an organization. We either reduce expenses or we increase revenues. Now a lot of times we want to do a little bit of each. Anyway, so anybody have a different philosophy of how you grow profits? We're all in agreement? All right. So when we just talk about the revenue side and take the expense side out, again, these are those four strategies that I had in the prior slide. And we're going to talk about these and what some ideas might be. So um, what I love about this is the model. And across the top is basically product new or existing, and along the horizontal or the vertical axis is going to be market or customer. And there's only two options there. They're either new or they're future, or you know, existing or new markets. So the thing I love about this is it simplifies. If you just drew four boxes and you knew across the top it was product and along the vertical that it was market and you knew you had existing, new, existing, new, you got the model. So I think if you can just keep in mind, there's two things you're thinking about, product and market, and then are they new or not. So we're going to talk about the first one called market penetration. And I would encourage you, if you've got questions or some ideas, to raise your hands, whatever. So when we're talking about market penetration, we want to increase the business we're doing in our current customer base, our current market. Now customer base and market can be slightly different because you have in essence a target market, you've probably all used that language, you have a target market and you might say, well let's just use mine, okay, B2B companies under 5 million and that might be my target. Well that doesn't mean I have business with all of those in that target. So one way is to get more of those customers. The typical ways that you look at increasing your market penetration, and again, remember, it's current product or existing product, existing market. So it's just, as some people also might call, going after the low-hanging fruit. So 
a lot of times what you're going to do is you want to increase the frequency your customer buys. Okay? Can you get them to buy more often? All right. Second idea, I'm sure you're already thinking of this, is can I get them to buy more each time? Can I get them to go from 10 units to 12? Can I get them to go from one thing that they buy and go to two? So we want to just see if we can get more going there. Another thing would be to sell to people that are buying from our competition. And the last option is to sell to a new customer. So again, think of your target market, and you've defined them, and you've said, this is the characteristics, this is how I describe them, this is where they are, all that kind of thing. Which are the ones that you can sell more to, and which are the ones that you aren't selling to at all? And can you pick them up? So sometimes in this, it's a loyalty improvement, or you might come up with a loyalty program. You might say, what can I do to add more value? Or how can I communicate that? Nathan is the master at certain things, as you well know. And when COVID hit, what did he do? He changed his messaging. He said, hey, we got the lockdown. I'm still here. I'm working. And he would put out videos of him meeting with people and showed that he was still working. So what did that do? That kept him in front of his current market and built that relationship even stronger. Now, another thing that became popular, I don't know, it seemed like 10, 20 years ago, we all talked about bundling. Remember when bundling was like, I don't know, wasn't that a rage <laughs> sort of a while ago? So it would be to combine some products. So if you've got multiple, and I use products generically, services fall in the same category here. So if you've got maybe five products, are you selling all of those to customer A, B, C? So one of the things, of course, that you want to do is then take a look at your customers and figure out what products are they all buying. So that you have almost a, a matrix. But it, it is a little bit of analysis, so I have to tell you that. And if you like analysis, then you're going to have a really good time. And if you don't, you better find somebody that does like to do that, that can help you. So you really want to figure out who's buying what. Can they buy more? And if they're not buying product, you know, the second product you have or the third, would that be something that would be beneficial to them? Would it help them in their business? So you want to take a look at those kinds of things. Anybody here have something that pops to mind that you can say, hey, we've done X, or we've done something, or we've done one of these very ideas? All right. Then let's look at the next box over, which is product development. So again, remember, it's the same products that you've got. But now, I'm sorry, it's a new product for the market that you have. So what is really easiest here is you already know your customers. Now you're going to have to do some research to find out what else is going on, what else they need, how they think about certain issues, what other problems they have. You know, get, get all of that organized or hopefully you've been hearing from your customers and they've been saying, gosh, if you could only do X or do you know anybody that offers such and such? And if you start collecting that information in a systematic manner in your business, you already have ideas here. And most of you have ideas. And you maybe just need to figure out how much data do we need and how much do people want this. So take a look at those new product ideas. And this can be simpler than you think. Sometimes you just have a new feature in a product or service. Sometimes you repackage. Sometimes you do a new technology, and this might seem really trite, and yet it's kind of an easy way to develop a new product. So think about that. Again, bundling can work here. You can do that. And there are companies like Holly's in the HVAC business that said, you know what, we're in people's homes. We're the go-to people when they have a problem with their furnace. And if their furnace is out, we're going to be their best buddy, and we're going to help them. If their, H, their air conditioning is out, they get called, and they start promoting that probably in April, don't you? Because everybody likes to leave it till the last minute. Well, 
companies like Holly's were really smart and they said, we're in many homes and we are their resource. So what else could we help them with? Well, gosh, how about plumbing? How about electrical? And all of a sudden now, they know they can call one place for a lot of their problems. So think about any way that you might have a product or service that just adds to what you're doing. Any thoughts, comments, questions here? Okay, because we have a fair amount of stuff we're rolling through here. So the next box here, you can see down on the lower left, is called market development. Again, you're taking current product that you have, or product line, and you're going to a new market. So in both the new product, uh, product development, market development and diversification, key, key, key thing is to do your research. Because if you don't do your research, you're probably not gonna do so well. So here, again, when you're looking at new markets, you wanna go figure out who else can use my product. And hopefully you've got really good information on your current target market so you know if it's consumers, you know their age, their demographics, their education, their income level, all that kind of stuff. If it's business, you know what industry they're in, number of employees, revenue, all of that kind of thing. So once you've got your current market rock solid, then you can start thinking about who else needs my product that isn't already in my mix. And so you start getting outside of the box a little bit and thinking about other industries. Now one of the, I think, almost easiest ways to do this is to say, can I take what I'm doing and go to a different geographic location? So here in the metro, let's say you have a real localized business and you're working south metro. And you go, well, what about north metro? Gosh, they have the same kinds of problems. Maybe you're looking at your market being in the upper Midwest, and you think, hmm, who else has problems like we have in the upper Midwest? Depends what problems you're talking about. But you might be thinking about who thinks like we do, and you might go, hmm, well, maybe North Carolina. What do I know about North Carolina? What do I know about potential customers there? And you start doing your digging and your research, but build from what you have now and think about what other kinds of characteristics and other problems, well, you know the problems that your product solves, so who else has that problem? What other market? And another one could be bundling here, and you can do some bundling in the other areas as well. So one example, a um, number of years ago, Nathan, do you want to hold up the other book that I'm giving away? So a number, yeah, a number of years ago, I wrote this book, and I sold a whole bunch. And I went to a publisher, it was a local company, and so they took on that, that's okay, <laughs> thank you. And they took on that and they decided to make what's called a perpetual calendar. Does everybody know what a perpetual calendar is? It doesn't have the year on it, it has January 1 through whatever, and Feb, you know, each month, but it doesn't have the calendar year. So they put a saying from the book on each page of the calendar and then you just flip it. Well, that's called a perpetual calendar. They sell into the gift market. So they were selling to Hallmark and all kinds of places like that. The other thing that they do that is really smart is they took that same product, remember I said existing product, they took it to the discount market. They ran that under a separate name, a separate design, and everything. Because the other thing, and one reason I wanted to explain to you that I do Future Focus, that's my small business clients, and Platinum is the bigger ones, is because you go, well, what the heck are you doing? <laughs> Which company are you? Well, it makes sense if you're going to differentiate things by size or some factor like that to distinguish it because if you have a regular price product and price line and all of a sudden you're going into the discount thinking, those first customers that are paying market or premium price are not gonna like to see you being a discount company. So keep that in mind that that's one way that you can do this. Um, now with all of these, there are different risks involved and if you don't understand the new market or the new product and the needs, that's where you run into some problems. So again, research is really, really important. And the last box down here is called diversification. This is where everything is new. Obviously, this is the highest risk idea that you can use because you're gonna have a new product 
and you're going to have a new market. So there's a whole lot of information that you've got to know. And you have to do things like figure out, do I have the capabilities? Do I have the management capabilities? Do we have the technological capabilities? You know, there's all those questions about doing something completely different. And does that make business sense? And can you pull it off? Can you do it effectively? In this one in particular, you want to make really sure that what you're currently doing is working really, really well. Because this is going to take a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of resources. So diversification, I would say, is the last idea that you want to pursue because it is the highest risk. Now, it could be high reward. I'm not exactly sure if that's the case, but you're going to put a lot on the line and you're going to have to really know a lot. Now, how do some companies do this? Anybody got the uh, idea? Some companies, in fact, in your industry, there's been a lot of consolidation. So a lot of companies acquire a new product and a new market. And you know, there's the whole talk about organic growth and strategic partners and all that kind of stuff. So that's one way that at least larger organizations and you don't have to get too big before you're doing acquisitions or teaming up in some kind of partnership. So those are the four strategies. So you think about it, and again, it's who can I sell my current product to that I already sell to and sell them more, more often, basically. The next option, oh, uh-uh-uh. We'll just leave it right there. And then the other idea is, in my current market or customer base, what else can I develop and sell to them? What other problems am I not solving right now? Because you probably hear that from them. So that's your product development. Going down again to the market development is thinking then, all right, my current products that I have, who can I sell those to that I'm not selling them to now? Again, a lot of this stuff isn't that tricky. And I just think when you break it down into these four boxes, it gives you a different way to look at it, and I think it makes it a lot easier. Well, and then the last one here, again, diversification, where you're going to go do everything new, which, you know, if you're a real daring person and got a lot of good research and a lot of money, maybe you want to try that. The other thing is that this is from an educational organization, is that as you're preparing your strategies and you're going through your mind and going, what am I going to do? What makes sense? You want to do things like a SWOT analysis in your company. I have sometimes where we do this by market, if you have multiple market segments, or you might do it by product. So just make sure that you're doing some research and really thinking through and being clear on what you want to do. If you want to get in touch with me, the first one on the left there is my Ready, Set, Grow. That's the free Facebook group for companies under 5 million, B2B typically. 5 million or less, 10 employees or less. So if that's something you want to check out, it's free. The second one, if you want to email me, I will be happy to share the slides with you. So if you want the slides, pop me an email and just say, send the slides, send the deck, send the PowerPoint, whatever, just make sure you know what you're looking for. And then when uh, timing is right, we're going to have the book available on Amazon. And the actual book, the cover is slightly different. It has white text. And I don't know if you can see this very well. So those of you from Tartan, can you read this? The students. You can read this? Oh, awesome. How about you two? Oh my god. OK. Well, for those of you that don't know, those of us that are over 30, our secret code is cursive. And, and it's not taught in schools anymore. I have two boys that are 21 and 26, and they can't read this stuff. I'm like, oh. So the new design is a little bit more like an italic. So it's a little bit easier to read because I said, I want people in junior high and in high school to get this and record their dreams and their hopes and everything and be encouraged and go for it. So that will be coming out. Then I would like to know if you have any questions. But here's an idea for you, too. And now would be the time to be taking your index card. And was there one thing that we talked about today that you can use and put into place when you get back to the office or tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. You could do that. 
And I just like this idea, too, that sometimes we forget to think about the positives. So I just wanted to share this idea with you. Now, as we're wrapping up, the other thing, if you will write down your one idea and when you're going to do it and email that to me, I will follow up with you and give you like a little reminder. If you say, hey, I'm going to do this by June 1, I'll be in touch. Somehow I'll figure out the technology to get that organized. And um, anybody right now, any questions, comments? Because we went through a lot of information quickly. OK, and also, if anybody here said, hey, you know, I got one idea. I think this was helpful. Then hang around, and we'll do, get a testimonial from you. Awesome. And thank you.